from Taylor Swift being an Illuminati clone of a Satanist to Jay-Z traveling throughout time and getting stuck in late 1800s Paris with Kanye, there are a ton of conspiracy theories revolving around music. So today I have gathered six of the most ridiculous music conspiracy theories. But first, as we approach Christmas, I just want to say a little something to my subscribers out there. I'll put a timestamp if you want to skip this. And I know it sounds a little cheesy or whatever, but I do appreciate you guys uh, supporting me this year. I had a crazy year on YouTube, hit 100k, hit 200k. And I just really, really appreciate all the support. I was actually in college uh, about a year ago today, and now I'm not anymore because I'm doing YouTube full time. So super thankful, super grateful. I really do appreciate you guys. A lot of great things have happened this year, and I'm super excited for next year. I'm going to try to make even better videos, uh, put out more content, do other sorts of things uh, other than just videos. So I'm really excited for that. So thank you to everyone who has stuck around so far, whether you were there at 2000 subs or 200K subs. I appreciate all of you. And I'm really excited excited to see what happens next year. Also, uh, if you guys aren't aware, this is a part three in a video series. I've done two videos of this nature. And when you make these videos, the theories sound kind of disrespectful. You know, some of them can and some of them are pretty ridiculous. And I want to clarify, it's not my intention to be disrespectful. I'm not promoting these. I just think they're interesting to look into, but it's kind of hard to talk about them without coming across as, you know, disrespectful or whatever. So just wanted to clarify my stance as we go into it. So let's continue. You posted a couple Instagram things that sort of that Tupac was alive. alive and in Malaysia. Yeah. On September 7th of 1996, Tupac Shakur was tragically shot and killed. Just recently, actually, someone was arrested in relation to the shooting, helping us understand the case a lot more. But like with every other celebrity death, there is a conspiracy accompanied with his. And that is that he faked it and is still alive today. And thanks to a lot of the people around him and how they handled it, it's actually somewhat believable. For starters, before Tupac passed away, he was really interested in a philosopher named Niccolo Machiavelli. Eight weeks after Tupac passed away, the label released the album he was working working on called the Don Culluminati the Seven Day Theory. It was released under the pseudonym Machiavelli, so he was very inspired by this philosopher. This intrigued a lot of conspiracy theorists as Machiavelli wrote a book called The Art of War, not to be confused with Sun Tzu's book, and in the book he mentioned faking your death to deceive your enemies. On top of that, the album's executive producer was listed as Simon rather than Suge Knight, and Simon was the first disciple who saw Jesus after he rose. Also in February of the year he died, he sat on the song Ain't Hard to Find, I heard rumors I died murdered in cold blood, dramatized. Pictures of me in my final state, you know mama cried, but that was fiction, some coward got the story twisted. In 1997, the music video for I Wonder If Heaven Got a Ghetto, it features Tupac off camera arriving in a desert shortly after his death. On another posthumous album in 2003, there was an outro where Tupac repeatedly said, expect me like you expect Jesus to come back, I'm coming. There are plenty of other lyrics or clues scattered throughout his music posthumously and before he passed away, but if Tupac were still alive today, where would he be? Well, many people believe he is hiding out in Cuba. His aunt had actually been hiding out in Cuba since 1979, so that's why most people think he's living there. For starters, there was a picture posted by a website called Reporters that featured Rihanna and Tupac together, supposedly in Cuba. However, many people do believe it's fake. There was another website called Hollaback that posted a video with some guy claiming he was just with Tupac in the studio, and then the camera pans to a bunch of guys in the parking lot with one dude who does look a bit like Tupac. Then the guys tell them to turn the camera off. There was even a video where Suge Knight was seen talking to some guy, apparently in Cuba, and from the back, the guy does kind of look like Pac. In 2018, Michael Nice, Tupac's previous bodyguard, faked his death. He came back after faking his death to prove he had the abilities to do so, then claimed he helped Tupac fake his death. He claimed that Tupac had been smuggled into Cuba with the help of Fidel Castro. Suge Knight was also another person who said that Tupac discussed faking his death before he died, and even straight up said one time in an interview that Tupac was still alive. In 2019, Suge Knight's son made a bunch of Instagram posts claiming that Tupac was not just alive, but also in the studio making new music. So in January, you posted a couple Instagram things that sort of implied that Tupac was, was alive. alive and in Malaysia. Yeah. And also, I think you said some things maybe last year as well. And uh, of course, that, you know, a lot of, I just am curious, what was that? I, like? I already know, trust me, because when I said it, the whole world, I mean, the whole world stopped moving. Like, everybody's like, what's going on? Like, I, I went and got 200,000 followers within two days. Although it is very likely he was doing this as a publicity stunt for the show he is starring in. There was also an interview where fellow rapper and friend of Tupac, Trish, says Tupac was still alive and he saw him in Cuba. Hey. 
There are also a ton of pictures of supposed Pac sightings, although I don't think we can be sure whether or not they're fake. On top of all of that, there have also been instances where other artists like Kendrick Lamar and Eminem reference Pac moving to Cuba. There's a lot more to this theory with the Machiavelli Project, the Coroner Report, Tupac having a body double, and many more things, but unfortunately I don't have time to get into all of them during this video. There's even a guy who's making a movie claiming Tupac is hiding out in New Mexico rather than Cuba, and is living on Navajo land since the authorities can't go there. But I do want to point out that there are other possible reasons that people like Suge Knight would keep promoting these theories, and that is to help sell records. Since Tupac has passed away, six posthumous albums have been released, so they definitely could have used this conspiracy to help boost sales, which I also think is a much more likely scenario. So like Awestruck, by her presence, this is one that I've seen popping up a lot lately, and it's that Taylor Swift is a clone of the Satanist slash musician Zena LaVey. So Zena LaVey is the daughter of the two founders of the Church of Satan. In 1985, she became the high priestess of the Church of Satan and for five years was the spokesperson for him. Apparently, she quit the Satanic Church in 1990, a year after Taylor Swift was born. But like I said, she quit the Satanic Church and apparently started practicing Buddhism and SLM. I'm not really sure what SLM is, but a lot of theorists tend to leave this part out. Anyways, the main draw to this theory is how similar the two look, which sure, they do look very similar, and Taylor has also been accused of having a very cult-like fan base. Then I saw a video of some guy talking about how one of her concerts seemed very satanic or cult-like. If that's the former high priestess of the Church of Satan, because it's not like this is a coven of witches, right? Choosy hmm. lyrics. That doesn't look like a summoning ritual. Just speculation, right? And then someone posted this online. Summon the demons. Someone else was thinking the same thing. The worst part is she commented twice and she says, is this the new one, two, three, let's go B. So she's saying is summon the demons, the new crowd chant that they say when she does this witchcraft ritual. There is also some evidence in the bad blood video where she dies and has her body reconstructed or in the ready for it video where there are two tailors, a light one and a dark one. And another big reason that this could be true is because of how much snake imagery Taylor Swift uses, but it actually all started from multiple beefs with people like Kim Kardashian or Calvin Harris that resulted in people using the snake emoji in reference to Taylor. Then Taylor started using this imagery herself. In the ready for it video, there is even a sign that says year of the snake. But why do people think this is evidence? Well, in the Bible, Satan was first depicted as a serpent or a snake, and that is often associated with Satanist imagery. Somehow though, this goes even deeper. Apparently, if you translate Zena Taylor bad blood in Hebrew, it says identical twins and has a numeric value of 1330 and 33 is also associated with the Illuminati. Although I'm not sure how true any of that is. That's just kind of what the theorists say. And also because Zena's dad founded the Church of Satan and Taylor's dad worked at an investment company and owned a Christmas tree farm, I guess that's some sort of evidence. Maybe I'm missing something here with this theory, but I just don't quite get it. To me, it just seems like another clone theory with a lack of evidence. I've covered some much more realistic theories before, but this one I can't quite get behind. Who we are and how do you maintain the sense of self while pushing it forward? I had to throw this one in here just for fun. So in 2013, a picture came out of a man in 1939 who had a strong resemblance to Jay-Z. The outfit, the pose, his facial expression, all resembled the iconic rapper. The picture was also taken in New York. And guess where Jay-Z's from? New York. However, that was about it for the theory, and it had no other supporting evidence. But it was enough for it to go viral, which led to fans doing some more digging, and that is when this theory gets somewhat interesting. One commenter pointed out how he has a song called Young Forever, which could tie into the immortal serum from the Illuminati. Then people began looking more into that one song about those guys who were in Paris, and one commenter said that the song is about him and possibly Kanye getting stuck in late 1800s Europe, him being a time criminal and the broken time machine. They think this because of lines like, got a broke clock, motherfuckers want to find me, we ain't even supposed to be here, and I'm supposed to be locked up too, you escaped what I escaped, you'd be in Paris getting fucked up too. So because of these lines, people think that Jay-Z was some sort of time criminal who was stuck in Paris and they were hunting him down, but he escaped. That's about all there is to this theory, it's a bit more of a gimmick theory, but I had to put it in here because it is pretty funny. He was walking towards the vestibule, Chapman stepped between him and Yoko and shot him. 
On December 8th of 1980, John Lennon was shot and killed by Mark David Chapman, a jealous Beatles fan. But some people believe that John Lennon was actually killed by Stephen King, the famous horror author. So let's look into the evidence. This theory was actually mostly started by one man, Steve Lightfoot, who has been supporting this theory for a long time. He actually sells a 24 page booklet and I thought it would be an ebook, so I bought it, but apparently it's just on its way to my house, so I won't have it in time for this video. But here's his thesis. The story about Mark Chapman is a cover-up. Bold print government cryptographic codes that include the killer's face and true identity, the killer's alleged name and letter to the editor printed before the murder, and Richard Nixon's book, The Real War, and back issues of Time, Newsweek, and US News and World Report magazines printed before, during, and after the night of December 8th, 1980, prove that Richard Nixon and Ronald Reagan arranged for the author Stephen King, then barely famous, to assassinate John Lennon, that King's writings draw dramatically from the crime, and that he taunts us all in his interviews and comments only makes this the story of a lifetime. Other than that being a very long run on sentence, he basically thinks that Reagan and Nixon wanted Lennon dead because he was anti-war, so they hired Stephen King to do it. One of the pieces of evidence available on the website is the fact that the two looked similar at the time, and he claims the picture of Chapman getting an autograph from John Lennon is actually Stephen King. There is also apparently a bunch of codes in the headlines, which Steve was able to decipher when reading all the press that came out around the time that John Lennon died. There's headlines that say things like poet of pity and anger, caught in the crossfire, who's in, who's out, the right to bear arms, and many more. But unfortunately, I haven't seen his real cold hard evidence yet because the booklet hasn't arrived, but if it does arrive in time, I'll update you guys right now. Yeah, uh, the book didn't come. I think I got scammed. And remember when I said he's been doing this for a long time? Well, he started in 1982, as he says on his blog, and two years ago, a Redditor posted a picture of him or someone else driving around a van with his website, Lennon Murder Truth dot com on it, along with things like jail Stephen King now. Someone responded to the post saying he went to a Stephen King autograph session in the early 90s and saw this guy standing outside with a board of evidence and proof. And I gotta say, I respect his dedication and his hustle. Uh, it seems like he's made his whole life about this theory, which is truly commendable, so shout out to Steve. But he isn't actually the only person supporting this theory. An author and TV producer named David Whelan did an interview with Daily Mail and claimed to have proof of this theory as well. I'm not sure if he's in cahoots with life Foot, but these are the only two people I've really seen promoting this theory. Anyway, in the interview, he showed off Mark Chapman's hit list, the autopsy, and more. He claimed that John was shot in the chest from the front, despite prosecutors saying he was shot in the back. He thinks that Mark Chapman was just the fall guy, so when the police arrived and saw Lennon dead and Chapman with a gun, it was just a closed case. But Whelan claims that there was another shooter. In the Daily Mail video, he actually had interviews with coroners, and if they're real, this theory may actually have some truth to it. Four times in his upper chest, from the front. It's like a rugby scrum, uh, several nurses, an anesthetist that's putting a tube in his throat for his debris for him, uh, people cutting off his clothes. I always thought he was shot in the front, shot four times with three exit wounds in the back. I have to maintain that it was he was shot in the chest. I can't change what I said I knew to be true. Yet retired NYPD lead detective Ron Hoffman in another phone interview claims that is impossible. He was walking towards the vestibule. Chapman stepped between him and Yoko and shot him. I'm hearing this which is a no. I would need the support of deny those accusations. In 2014, Gucci Mane was sentenced to prison for two years, and when he went in, he was fat. Two years later, in 2016, he came out of jail looking nice and slim, losing around 100 pounds in prison. And while most people, like myself, thought this was cool and inspirational, some people began to think that he was cloned. He posted one video in particular that got the attention of the theorists. Becca, I used to be a fat boy. People were in shape. People were not helping. People Don't walk on the carpet, babe. Okay. People need some inspiration because listen, I was 290 pounds. Now I'm 190 pounds. I lost 100 pounds. You, so, you 190 or 190? I'm 190 right now. Look at this. Um, you, I said I'm 190. So check this out. You can do it. If I can do it, you and me for instance. Comments on this video read, It's no way that's the real Gucci and it seems like she is his handler. He tried his hardest to say Maine like he really from the South. His ass sounded like he from the North Pole. Get that damn clone the fuck out of here. That's a pretty funny comment. Aside from how he talked, people were pointing out how it didn't look like he still had his face tattoo of the ice cream cone, which I have to say isn't true because the tattoo is just a little faded. There was also one false quote from Boozy floating around where he said he thinks the new Gucci is a clone. The fake quote reads, I rock with 
with Gucci the long way, but that ain't the real Gucci. We both sitting in the studio and he seemed lost after his show. At the mansion, he called me Herman. You know they can do that crazy clone shit these days. You look at Gucci and tell me that's Gucci and I'll pay your child support and your baby mama rent. But this quote never actually existed and was just posted on a satirical website called Thing You Think. So the main supporting evidence for this theory is that he talks different, acts different, and looks different, but there is a little more. On the song Champions with Kanye, he said, now that Gucci home, it's over for you Gucci clones. I'm not sure how you can hear that and think that that means he's saying he's a clone, but people did. This crazy discourse even prompted Gucci Mane to say on Snapchat that he neither supported or denied the allegations that he was a clone. I'm hearing that Gucci is a clone. I wouldn't even support or deny those accusations. <laughs> But it seems like Gucci Mane thought the whole thing was funny as he hashtag Gucci clone on his Instagram and a month later released a music video that had scenes with multiple Gucci Manes or Gucci men, I guess. The craziest thing about this whole thing is that the CIA, the real central intelligence agency, responded to BuzzFeed when they asked them about this. They said, internet rumors are not news and the Office of Public Affairs will not waste time on them. Despite several highly publicized claims, human cloning still appears to be fiction. There currently is no solid scientific evidence that anyone has cloned cloned human embryos. It's just so nuts to me that this thing got so big that the CIA felt the need to respond. I think it's much more likely that Gucci just decided to clean up his act and get his life together while in jail, eating better, getting off drugs, and overall just trying to get things straight. I don't, I don't have that type of richness. My richness is life forever. On May 11th of 1981, at the age of 36, Bob Marley sadly passed away due to melanoma. However, due to a shooting a handful of years prior, many believe that his cancer was somehow caused by the CIA or a cover-up for them killing him. It sounds really strange and the story has a lot of politics behind it, so I'll try to sum it up as best as possible. To put it simply, there was a big political conflict in Jamaica between the People's National Party and the Jamaica Labor Party, which was pro-US, which had Jamaican citizens concerned that the United States was going to have power over over that party. The conflict even got violent, so it was a pretty strenuous and dangerous time. As an election was coming up between the two parties, the People's National Party planned something called the Smile Jamaica Concert in an attempt to defuse tension. Bob Marley was one of the people who was requested to play at this concert, and he agreed, but didn't want people to think he was favoring one party over another. Bob Marley was known for being politically neutral and promoting love and peace, so this definitely seemed like something he would want to do. Supposedly though, there were banners being put up around Jamaica identifying Marley with the PNP, which along with him working for the PNP for the Smile Jamaica concert, resulted in a gunman entering Bob Marley's home two days before the festival. Him, his wife, and manager were all shot, but thankfully, everyone was able to make a full recovery. Most people figured that this attempt was politically motivated, and some people speculate that the CIA was actually behind it, since many thought that the concert was more of a support rally for the PNP. Now, I do think it is possible that the CIA could have been behind this shooting. We even learned that the CIA did keep tabs on him which are still classified, but I doubt they were behind what would later happen. Marley performed at Smile Jamaica anyway, performing for over 80,000 people, and then he later relocated to England. A year after the attempt at his life, he was diagnosed with melanoma under his right big toe. This is where the theory gets a little wonky, as some believe that the CIA somehow gave him cancer, or maybe put some needle or something in his shoe so when he put the shoe on, he got cancer. This theory was further pushed when an article came out on a website called YourNewsWire.com in which they made some crazy claims. They said that a retired CIA officer named Bill Oxley admitted to committing 17 assassinations for the US government, including Bob Marley. The alleged quote says, he was succeeding in creating a revolution that used music as a more powerful tool than bullets and bombs. Bob Marley in 1976 was a very serious threat to the global status quo and to hidden power brokers implementing their plans for a new world order. However, there is actually no proof that any of this is real, and there aren't even any other sources citing that Bill Oxley was a real person. So while I think the shooting maybe could have had something to do with the CIA, I don't think they had anything to do with his passing away due to cancer. Anyways, thank you guys for watching the third and final part in this series. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Anyways, this has been your boy Matty Balls. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and maybe even consider giving me a Christmas gift and subscribing down below. Other than that though, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.